So today we're looking at surfaces or creating surfaces in ARCHICAD. When we're creating a surface, a surface has a texture linked to it often. So in this case we see that we've got a, a surface and we've applied a texture to it. Uh, depending on whether we're in Cine Render, Engine Editor or Internal Engine Editor, we can apply a picture. In this case, this is a picture out of a, a folder in my library. But where do we get these from to begin with? We can get these off the internet, but we have to be very careful about licensing when we do that. I'm just going to download a few and just show you the problems that we can have with some of these textures. So this is a really nice looking brick. This texture looks pretty good. But look, there's a problem. Obviously someone's concerned about people using this image. Uh, it's copyright issue. If we look at a full size image of this, I just want to have a look at some of the other issues that we might have with it. Let's just save this into our YouTube video, tutorials, and quickly open that in Photoshop. If we look at this file it's, it's interesting looking, it's very rustic, but the problem particularly for using something like this, apart from any copyright issues in ARCHICAD for commercial use, is that it's an interesting picture, but just because it's an interesting picture doesn't make it a good texture. Because if I repeat this pattern, and how can we tell what that's going to look like, uh, a fast way that I'm going to do it is to go layer, new layer by copy, reduce that down, change the size, edit transform scale, and I'm going to reduce it by 50%. Let's even do 33%, hey? Apply, I'm gonna move it down, I'm gonna go Command J, which is copy layer, Command J, copy layer, I'm going to group these together, so I'm working very, very fast, I'm just trying to make this quick for you. Layers, merge layers, layer, new, layer by copy, which is again, command or control J, and then again, and then we'll go layers, merge layers, is look, it's a great picture but as a texture, as a texture, it's not consistent. And the color, the light, means that we see, apart from the fact that there's a little bit of a gap thing happening between our files, which is the way that the picture's saved, apart from the literal line, we see a big light or color differentiation across the surface. Now, before we waste any time in changing this in Photoshop, effectively, this is not useful as a texture. So be, be aware of what you're looking for in a texture. So we're going to delete that. Delete that one as well. So what do we want? Let's have a look at this one. This texture is a lot better in terms of its light or gradients or variation because it's, it's consistent. The other thing that this does well, and we'll see in a second, it's not perfect, but it's a little bit better. When we go filter, well, let's do it the same way, just to be consistent. Layer, new, layer by copy, reduce it down. I'm just going to do 50% this time. Uh, edit, transform, scale, 50%. Command J, merge them together, layer new layer, 
Now I copy. What do we see here? So the it looked good as a as one image. It looks good. But when we looked at it in more detail, what we find is that the edges don't match up. We were talking before about that snake game on their Nokia phone, which means when we go from one edge to the other, and I'll undo this to go back to where we were before, or I'll just turn these layers off and turn the other one back on. If we use our ruler, perhaps, to match up how these work, when we go from one side, in this case the top to the bottom, we see that the white lines match up, so that's good. And when we go horizontally, we see that the lines match up from one side to another, and so that's good as well. So at a first glance, it, it works, but for size, it doesn't. So we can see here that the thickness of this brick here is the same as this one here. When we group those together like we did before, it gets far too wide. We would need to make it shorter. So let's just have a look at quickly how to do that, editing this image if we were to use something like this as a texture, we'd want to crop the edges. I'm going to just delete these other two layers, just so we're left with our original image. And I'm going to reduce it down a bit. I'm going to take off the edges, because the edges aren't working. You'll see that it's black around the edges as well. Image, crop. Now let's try that process again. Of course I can layer copy, layer copy, or I can do it the other way, filter, other, offset, and see what it looks like when I start to tile that edge. So horizontally, we probably made it a bit too short now. But otherwise it still works pretty well, except it's slightly out of center. What about vertically? It's fairly good, but it's not quite right. So before we were looking at a very rustic brick, and the joints didn't matter too much because they were very rustic, but when we're looking at a very geometric or mathematical joint or material, we see that those joints are very, very important. That if it's even just slightly offline, in this case because it's so stark difference, contrast between black and white, it's very, very obvious. Now when we're using such an, a geometric texture, what we can do to make our lives a lot easier is to reduce the size of the area in which we are repeating. Because the larger the area we repeat, the more likely it is that we're going to create problems. So I'm going to use my grids here, my ruler, to create an area which is defining a repeatable pattern. Now if I reduce my canvas down to this area, so I'm going to just draw a marquee over this. Image crop. Take away my rulers. I'll do the same thing as I did before, layer, new layer by copy, just because it will help I think, image, image size, sorry, edit, transform scale, 50%, command J to copy, lock those together, as merge, command J to duplicate, now I haven't done this perfectly but we see that just reducing the file repetition makes this process a lot easier. Now the angle is wrong, <laughs> the area that we saved, the sample that we saved wasn't perfectly horizontal to begin with. If we put a, a ruler over that we can see that it's starting to move off the line and we could select both of these and rotate them if we were trying to make that work. But we really might struggle depending on how well we do it. 
but creating a smaller sample helps to avoid some of that irregularity. So the biggest suggestion that I make when you're trying to edit textures is to get a good texture to begin with so you don't have to spend a lot of time doing a lot of work. And then secondly, use a small area. Don't repeat problems. Don't multiply the mistakes. Find a texture that works very well. So maybe you might find one of those on Google or maybe you might be able to find a great texture that you can use in this way. But it's probably less likely. What you probably want to do is to find maybe a website that provides these. So there's a lot of different textures, texture libraries. Now, CG Textures is a great one. Some of them you'll be required to create an account in order to download them. But you'll note that they have hundreds if not thousands of these textures for use. Some of them will be already perfectly seamless and some of them might require a bit of work. Some of them you'll be required to log in in order to access the images, others you'll be able to get for free without needing to be members. You'll see here that some of them all you need to do is have an account and then you can download them for free but for the very large file size they're requiring you to become a member i.e. therefore paying for them. So, so to get good textures it's hard to get them for free sometimes we need to actually purchase them. So there is CG textures is pretty good. Uh, there's also a few others. It's going back. Texture King See what else we have. And um, Mei Yang is another website that I've used before for good textures. There's a lot around, uh, you should be able to find a lot and go from there.